Okay, so I may have recorded this about three or four times, and each time I've not been happy with um, how it's turned out. I've either missed something that I wanted to say, or I just mumbled a lot. What I really wanted to go through really quickly is the current state of what this hobby is at the moment, and how people are getting the wrong information for the care for their animals. And um, you get a lot of comments saying, oh, do your research, do this, do that. But people tend to not actually understand how to do research, or at least do research in the proper way. So I'm just going to cover now the different types of research people do whilst using the internet before they get their first animal, or even while they've got their animal. And I want to just go across the pros and cons of them, and then I'm going to show you how to do some really good research and how to look up some studies and how to look up the science firsthand rather than rely on anecdotal evidence on Facebook or on forums. Not to say that information isn't good, but you should be definitely be asking people either to provide you links or should be polite, take that information, go back and just do the research and verify that for yourself. Don't take things as gospel as what people are telling you, because quite often what you're told is filled with folklore husbandry. And what I mean by that is, the term folklore husbandry um, basically means husbandry ways that came about because that's the way things have always been done, not necessarily founded in any sort of scientific evidence. Folklore husbandry is husbandry that has just always been done, no one's really questioned it, and it's not really based on any kind of scientific findings. Okay, so the first thing let's talk about, number one essentially, is websites. Um, now we're talking care guides, we're talking just those really, gen really generic websites that you find with no stated author, you know, no date, no, no links, no studies, just a lot of opinion, I'm going to say. You can find a lot of care guides with things like Oh, you must have your bearded dragon on tile when in fact that is entirely untrue controversial subject but if you have a healthy bearded dragon with no issues to begin with and you're keeping it in the correct parameters so we're talking correct humidity we're talking correct heat we're talking correct uvi there is no reason why you should not be keeping that animal on a loose substrate that encourages their natural behaviours to dig. But I am going to make a video at a later date going into this in detail. So before I basically just badmouth websites the entire time, there are good websites, there are examples of advice on Facebook. It's just that with websites, anyone can make a website. Anyone can put that information online. You have to really weed your way between the good and the bad, essentially. A really good website for care guides that are really well written and there are references in it is Reptifiles. Okay, so number two, we're going to talk about books. Most of the time, books will have a stated author, so you can Google that author. You can see what their qualifications are. You can see what they've produced in the past, any sort of like stigma attached to them. The only bad thing about books is that often... By the time of writing and the time it's published, that information might even be outdated. And um, some books just might not really age well. There are some really good examples of books though. Um, the books that I would recommend that are really good, I consider them to be must-reads, is all the Arcadia books, um, um, anything written by John Courtney Smith. Okay, so number three is scientific studies and journal articles. Now this is something that is peer-reviewed, something that is often scrutinised by other scientists before it even makes it to publication. And often the people producing it either have qualifications way above both you and I, ridiculous amount of experience way above you and I, we're talking like PhDs and Masters here, often it's a team of people, not just one person but you do get studies that come out from just one person and you can just see the data the methodology you can see how that came about and it's a more well-rounded way of finding information 
that is peer reviewed by other scientists that is current i mean papers are being produced each year and if you want you can search by year if you want to so now i'm just going to show you how to actually search these studies yourself i recorded this a couple of days ago during the times where i must have done two or three recordings and i wasn't happy so i apologize for the constant babbling but here we go so what I want to show you now is how to actually look at those scientific papers and we're going to go and search them up now. So it's not as complex and as daunting as you may think it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to Google Scholar. Now what this is is a search engine for scientific journal articles. So, as an example, let's look at um, Snake UVB. So, Snake UVB. I can't type UVB. Actually, let's do it as Corn Snake UVB because that is a really popular, um, commonly kept species. And you see a lot of people on YouTube saying, no, nope, snakes don't need UVB. So let's look at what the science says. Okay, so this is a study done in 2008, mind you, but let's look at it anyway. Be mindful of the date when you look at things. So let's look at this. So depending on who published it, it will depend on where they will have it. So this one is really weird, but you can generally look at the results here. That's typically not what you'll come across as this sort of layout, but we'll just look at the results real quickly here. The concentrations of 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 in snakes that were provided differed significantly from the value in control snakes. So by control, what they mean is they had a group that they gave UV and a group that they didn't. So they can compare. So basically, the corn snakes that were given UVB used it. This is a hormone in the blood plasma that elevates when ex exposed to UVB and the body synthesizes it. So if you see a rise in this, you know that the animal can actually utilise UVB. Let's look at another example. So you can see why I've been doing all my like previous research and stuff, because I've looked at things before. But, see, look, bit of drug in. Burmese python. I want to show you this one because it's, it's quite a good example. So this is typically what you'll come across and you'll come across an abstract. The abstract is basically the summary of the study. And you'll see in the abstract there that actually yes the levels went up when exposed to UVB. But often you can't actually access the full article because it's hidden behind like a paywall. It's quite funny because the scientists have to pay them and they charge people to read it. But um, so I really want to just close on making a point of saying this. Please uh, make an effort to gravitate towards this and books and websites sparingly before you gravita gravitate towards this. That's not to say that some of these people that are producing videos aren't also actually using this and also are showing this in their videos but the vast majority of what you're going to find on here is showing that folklore husbandry that I mentioned earlier.